Self-Publishing Podcast, episode number 22. Welcome to the Self-Publishing Podcast, where if you want something done right, you've got to do it yourself. And now, here are your hosts, three guys who are down with OPP, Johnny, Sean, and Dave. Hey, everyone. It's welcome to the Self-Publishing Podcast, the podcast that's all about how to get your words out into the world without contending with agents, publishers, or the other gatekeepers in traditional publishing. I'm Johnny B. Truant, and with me today, having fun with technology as always, are <laughs> Sean Platt, the culprit, and Dave Wright, who is here on time with no problem. Innocent bystander. <laughs> Innocent by association. I love how there was a problem today, and Johnny's like, well, you just got to open up the secret porn window. <laughs> Actually, Dave made that translation. I said what? open up an incognito window, and Dave opened up an incognito window. You know, that window you use when you're looking at porn. <laughs> so. what, what's this porn thing? I have no idea. It's on the internet, you say? <laughs> just that's open up I've a heard. browser. It's your homepage, right? No. That's what, I, that's what I've heard. <laughs> Yeah. So today we're going to have a little bit, in a few minutes, we're going to have Paul Wolf on. Sean, give us the uh, the, the two-minute version of, of, of what, what we're talking to Paul about. Well, Paul's, um, Paul's one of the smartest uh, video content marketing guys I know, and he has a, a small a small business that's all basically video-based. He His main source of lead gen is YouTube. And while it's not a direct crossover for authors, I think there's a lot of crossover there and a lot to be learned because I think YouTube is one of those areas where um, a lot of writers are actually, um, they, they automatically assume YouTube isn't for them and I think that video is really, really strong and it's only going to get stronger and it's a great way to bond with your audience. I mean, we're doing these hangouts and we're putting them straight up on YouTube. It's, it's one way of you know, growing our, our reach uh, through video. And I think that Paul can teach us and, you know, everyone listening um, a lot about video and, and way to optimize our YouTube channels and um, reach new fans. That sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this whole writing thing I, I, is just too much. I thought it was easy. And, I, and I'm going to end up doing it, too. You guys are going to be like, go, go spiff up the YouTube page. <laughs> asshole. Funny it's true. Well, nobody wants to see me on the web. I mean, <laughs> most writers kind of look like me, fat and pasty, right? <laughs> that's I think, the, yeah, <laughs> but I, I don't think they're going to see you naked. I think they're going to hear your idea. Well, someday. that depends what time of night they tune in. <laughs> Do you subscribe to that magazine, Fat and Pasty? <laughs> they had a no, good issue. They, they canceled my subscription. <laughs> <laughs> Too many letters fat to and the pasty. Editor. <laughs> so I finished a project. I'm happy to announce I finished a project. Unlike, oh my god! Um, <laughs> I'm so happy. You guys, let's go go. <laughs> you guys finish stuff all the time, but I'm just well. You know, it wouldn't have happened. Well, <laughs> so I was going to say it wouldn't have happened if not for this podcast, but it technically wouldn't have happened if not for this podcast in two ways. Um, <laughs> one of which irks Dave, I think, and um, it's because it's because I, you guys are are. You're such a hard to hit target. It's like they're going, 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 and I feel like I'm not producing anything. I need to produce things. So anyway, so story behind this, there it is, <laughs> is that on uh, Better Off Undead episode uh, five, maybe? So betteroffundeadshow.com slash five, I guess, was the episode. And um, I, I, we were talking about who what was it like? You, who you'd want to be? Like which supernatural creature was better, or something like that? I think or, it was just a, a straight rhetorical. Would well, you want to be a vampire? You got or, to, no, it was vampire werewolf, and we were arguing whether one was better than the other. And I uh, said, I don't want to be. <laughs> yeah, and, and oh, well, well, we don't want to steal your punchline here, Johnny. <laughs> well, okay, so so we I don't know. We started talking about like if Dave were a vampire because he's basically a vampire to begin with, and then and then. It, I think it came out of, I forget who said it, but anyway, it came up like, why don't we ever see any fat vampires? They're always so sexy and like sparkly and they're, you know, dressed well and just the pretty people. 
And so, anyway, so the short version is that my new novella is called Fat Vampire, and it's no. about <laughs> how it started. We were talking about healing, and w would you want to become a vampire if you had like a broken leg or something? Would your leg always be broken because you'd revert to that state? So I said, well, I don't want to be a vampire until I lose weight, or I would be a fat vampire if I could never lose weight. <laughs> fat vampire. <laughs> the argument was that, 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 at least that I remember making, was that you would heal back to what you were. Right. So if 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 you if you became a vampire and you were fat, you you'd be you know, you'd be fat forever, which you know, it'd be fine, but then Dave started making jokes about uh, you wouldn't be able to catch his prey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a premise waiting to happen. Because the thing is you I think with a vamp with vampirism you go back to like muscle memory, right? Like your best possible shape. Or but, flab memory. <laughs> yeah, Dave's body has muscle amnesia. So there <laughs> is no <laughs> <laughs> There's no chance for that vampire to survive. He's just gonna be eating like <laughs> fat rats and stuff. <laughs> I had, I had crazy fun writing it. It, I, I, it's, I took me eleven days to write it. It's, it's about thirty-five thousand words, and I just couldn't stop writing it. I was telling Sean some of the things that happened in it, and it's just, it was just so much fun to write. But so anyway. that right there, fat vampire is like. I mean, between the three of us, it's one of my favorite projects in months. I think it's awesome. But what I love most about it is concept to up on Kindle in 30 days, right? Like, you're talking yeah. a month, and you're going to be live with this thing. And um, and I don't know if you want to talk about some of the other stuff that you were talking about earlier in email, if it's too early for that, but a, basically a way that you can use this for a while. It's just, it's really, really cool. It's really yeah, smart. Yeah, I think I'd develop the concept because, and this is something, I, I thought of this and I made a note that we've we've got a few guests. Who, our guest next week is, what? what's Hugh? Hugh Howie. Uh, Hugh Howie. Uh, Hugh Howie. So line up for that. He's, he's the author of Wool, which is like this huge self-publishing success story. So... That'll be in the next and episode. And he got signed to a movie deal. Which is... By Ridley Scott. The, wow. Okay, which is I kind of a big this. deal. <laughs> yeah, you know what? You, I guess. You know what? I know you guys wanted um, audio link. Did, Dave, did you watch that by chance? Any of no, that? not yet. I am t probably tomorrow. Yeah, one of my favorite things about this was I just, like, I really liked how the guy thinks. Like, I, I'm, I'm really hyped to have him on next week. But one of my favorite things that he said was um, the interviewer was asking, you know, now that you've, you've kind of made it, would you, would you want a traditional deal? And he's like, no. <laughs> and, and I loved his Would reasoning. you want to stop doing everything you did to get successful? <laughs> right. Well, well no, he, he was like, yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I can't even imagine that because I like the control. I like the fact how fast I can turn it around. I like that. You know, he, he's big on NaNoWriMo. I think we should talk about NaNoWriMo too, but he's, he's big on NaNoWriMo. He uses it as his major like, production time, even if it's just banking stuff. He's like, he's a machine. And um, so, so part of the reason was the control, which I totally understand. I totally agree with that. But I also like how um, he, said, um, he said no. He said there's way more prestige in being a self-published author right now. And I love that because I totally agree with him that he's the first person I ever heard articulate prestige as being like a greater than instead of equal to traditional publishing. And, and, and he, he qualified it. He said, yeah, because I got the Ridley Scott deal and Entertainment Weekly called me that week. And he said, they called me not because my, my book got sold. They called me because Ridley Scott bought a self-published book. And he's totally right. It's like the self-published authors who make it big right now are more newsworthy than, you know, books get bought all the time. It's not that newsworthy. A self-published book going to Ridley Scott, that's, that's a story. So the reason I'm mentioning him and I, is because I just, this is the danger with Sean. If you mention something, he's going to go off for 10 minutes. I was just <laughs> mentioning Hugh just for like a second and to move on to say that we're going to have him next week and that's awesome. This is part one of the show. <laughs> is that, well, no, see, the best part is that Sean's video is actually frozen of him looking very stern. So right now I'm making this joke and I'm like, dude, have a, have a sense of humor. Um, <laughs> asshole. <laughs> anyway, so what I was going to say is that I, I, I made a note, and I'd, I'd like to talk about the difference between premise and plot and setting and all that, because the idea of the fat vampire was, I think, a good premise, but that's not 
then go anywhere. Like you, you have to have a plot. And so that, that was interesting figuring that out. Fortunately, it came easy. I just love the novella format. It, it just, I was able to, to come up with an idea for the plot and go from one thing to another easily. Did you outline or pants? I outlined it, but very, very vaguely. Because I, I didn't want him... I, I, what I didn't want to do is, with the title like Fat Vampire, I didn't want it to be like <laughs> insulting, because I don't have a problem with people who are overweight. It's just a funny Yeah, concept. right. I, did, except you, for Dave. Did, did you check in with anybody? Like, um... Yes, I did. I checked in with um, some <clears throat> a friend of mine who calls herself, she has referred to herself as fat before, so I said, okay, well, so as my, as my fat representative. And she said it sounded okay as long as I didn't, like, you know, beat on him, as long as the narrator wasn't judgmental, and so I wanted to make him the hero. Yeah, but you don't have a, you don't write with judgmental narrators anyway, right? No, but there is that danger, and I don't, as much as I want to be fearless as a writer, I don't want to be a total dick either. Right, right. So I, I do have one uh, quick question, if <laughs> if you guys don't mind a- answering one before we get Paul, because we told him we're running a little bit late. Yeah, sure. Um, so this is this is for me, but I think it would be applicable for anybody listening to this, and it's apropos for me at this time. And that's the whole. You know how Stephen King he has the the thing in on writing where he talks. About, you write with the door closed, and when you're done, he says, you know, you you have. If you have people who want to look at it, who are like friends or family, or sort of your casual editors, and I mean, what's the what's the sequence look like for you guys in terms of after your first draft is done, who does it go to? When do you make your edits? How many drafts? That that sort of thing. Well, if we had more time, Dave, do you want to answer this? Uh, you like can. the, the five minute version. Okay, so <laughs> so well, okay, I better then. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if, if if we had more time, I think that we would pass our work around a little bit more than we do. Um, and I think for longer projects and some of the stuff that we have really early in development, it'll probably go to more eyes before it just goes to us. But I think the fact that we have um, a great partnership and we have a really good balance in our partnership and we know what to look for in the other's work um, for good or bad, I think that, that that's enough usually I think if we had a few more maybe if we had more time and a few more beta readers we would we would like that margin a little bit but I think our instincts are pretty sharp um, at least when it comes to one another's work and you know we're, we're both pretty unafraid I mean Dave will eviscerate you know something I wrote if he doesn't like it or if it's sci-fi or something you know so <laughs> um, yeah but like at what point would you let somebody like Sean does your does your wife read your stuff um, I read it out loud. She never reads anything. I, I read it. He out locks loud too. her in a basement <laughs> and reads so, it outside yeah. the door. <laughs> She's bound to a chair while, while I read out loud. So but, which ver- which version do you read her? Do you read her one after it's gone through several rounds of edits? Do you read her the raw? Yeah, I would never send anyone anything raw. In fact, Dave's never even seen raw. Dave's seen rough from me before, but I prefer to send stuff polished. I prefer to send stuff to somebody else after I've been over it three times. After you've been over it. After I've been over it three times. Yeah. So you. Three times, and then you send it to Dave. So yeah. it's, it's it's edited like what five times or something? <laughs> like eight, probably. It, yeah, it, our our copy gets scrubbed. <clears throat> I mean, even between us, like it's it's been through six times just by the time Dave and I are done with it, and it goes to the editor. So then the editor is doing, and then it goes back to Dave. So it, it could be as many as ten times. Like it's a lot. Wow. All right. Well, we better get we better get Paul on. Hey, um, Sean, I just paused it really quick. Your video and audio sucks again. Is that, Dave, do you, is it the same for you? Yeah, he, he's You're very stuttery. Stuttering. Now, because we Paul and I don't want to wait, and by the way, this is on YouTube, um, <laughs> it's, it's um, I'm not going to worry about it because talking more, you'll be talking less, but we should figure out what that is because it's the same as last. It, it's just my internet connection. I mean, I moved to Time Warner, so I don't know what else I can do, but I don't even have internet on my laptop, which is right next to the desktop. I'm only oh. on right now because I'm plugged into the ethernet, so I don't know what to do about it. Hmm. Okay. Well, let me um, let me get Paul on, and, and mindful of the fact that we are still live on YouTube, although I am paused, do you, I don't have contact info for him. I don't have, can you email me something or? Oh, crap. Like yeah, how to he, add him? He, he, um. Yeah, he said he'd send you that his circle information. Oh, okay. Well, I don't. Okay, is that how I do that? Let's see. So he 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 said I'm here and I'm ready. He commented because it just I don't even know how to do that. I just type him in. Do yeah, I have to like add him just, in some way? I think you should just be able to type him in, and if he follows you, it should, he should show up. Okay, here he is. All right. 
Okay, I'm going to unpause the audio here again. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, add Paul now, and we'll see if he's here. In the meantime, we can make tasteless jokes. Oh, awesome. We've never done that before. <laughs> um, we should encourage um, Paul to swear a lot because he's English, and it just sounds cool. Oh, it does. It's like in The Matrix where the... Um, the, what's the, the, oh, the Merovingian? Oh, the French guy. He's like, it's like wiping your panties. Well, what does he say? Is wiping your ass with silk. <laughs> and welcome, Paul. Hey. <laughs> on that note. <laughs> hey, Paul. I'm Johnny. Nice to meet you. Hey, Johnny. And Paul, I assume Dave, you are. Hey, Paul, Johnny, Paul, Paul, there Johnny. You <laughs> there you go. So, Sean, why don't you do the intro? Because you. Uh, did you, you unpause know, on the I recording? Did. Okay. I did. Yeah. Um, that happened when he said, okay, I'm unpausing right now. Didn't it was that. about a minute ago. <laughs> um, Paul and I have talked uh, a, a few times um, on, on Skype, and I always walk away feeling um, two things, that there's so much I could do with video and hating myself that I don't have time to do it all. So um, I will say that I have taken action on 0% of the stuff Paul has told me. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> but it's all good stuff. And what's what's what I really what I really like about Paul is he's he's really built a, a cool, legitimate business in a very niche space by using YouTube for lead gen. And I really like I think it was maybe our first conversation ever. And he said, Yeah, the, the my first objective, my goal, my only goal when I get people um, on YouTube is to get them off of YouTube. And there's just there's so much truth to that. You, you, YouTube is just a conduit. It's just part of a larger whole. And I think that, that YouTube is something probably more than any other social media channel, authors don't use it. They don't know how to use it. They don't, even if they're making video, I don't think they're probably optimizing it. But I mean, just in our case, we've got two podcasts that we're both doing hangouts for. So we've got YouTube stuff there. Dave and I are, you know, ridiculously behind on making trailers, but that's something we want to do. Um, I've got a, a hangout plan coming up with the digital writer. Those are all ways to bond with an audience. I think book trailers are one thing. That's that's a that's a more of a specific animal. But I think just using in this kind of capacity to bond with readers, I think is is great. And um, what's Paul's business? I don't think he said. Um, can you hear me, by the way? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Um, I teach the bass guitar on the internet. Cool. So th that's the uh, that that's the background to what I do. And um, when I started out, uh, uh, but but I'm a writer. I hate making videos. It's a pain in the ass. <laughs> um, I really can't stand it. But I wrote these articles. I was following a model. This is back in the day. Following a model. Uh, it doesn't matter what model it was, but it said you start out, you write 30 high quality keyword optimized articles, blah, 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 blah. So, you know, I've written novels, screenplays, writing's not a big deal. So I wrote these articles um, and I was getting absolutely bugger all traffic. I mean, I looked after six months, we're, to we're talking like three visits a day was my average or something like that. In six months, I'd built a list of 20 people. What do you fucking do? You know, it was, it was totally crap. Anyway, um, so what happened, I was taking a course with someone on, because uh, I wanted to, to put a non-fiction book together, a, a bass guitar book. Um, and I was going to sell it as an ebook and sell it from my site. And I was taking a course just on the psychology of info products and stuff like that. And I had an assignment in that course. And the, the guy taking the course said he wanted everyone, it, it was e either to write a detailed article or to create a five minute podcast or to shoot a short video. But with me, he said, you're not allowed to write something because I know you can write. You need to be pushed out of your comfort zone. And I knew I needed to make video, so I thought, oh, sod it, I'll make a video. So I made a video, and it, uh, by the way, it was utterly crap. It's still up on YouTube. <laughs> the production values were terrible. I mean, it was recorded with, I'm, I'm, I'm on a MacBook now, um, but this is quite a swishy MacBook. This is uh, seven or eight months old. We're going back four years, and I was on a MacBook that was about two years old then. So the camera in the MacBook wasn't great, but that was what I used um, for 
the video, no lighting, no backdrop. Um, all the production values were terrible. I had a, uh, for my bass videos, I have a clip on mic, like a headset mic. Um, and what you're supposed to do, which I didn't know at the time, was you're supposed to run the arm of the mic down the side of your jaw and the sound then it communicates into the mic that way. I didn't know that, so I had the microphone bit in front of my mouth, <laughs> so there was all breathy sound. Anyway, as I say, terrible. All the production values, terrible, but the content was solid. Um, it was just a simple thing about tuning. Um, anyway, so I put that up, and a day, two days later, I went and checked on it, and it had a thousand views. I thought, wow, that's unexpected <laughs> and yeah and but not only that uh, in these days I, I didn't know anything about or hadn't figured out how to drive people from YouTube back to the website all that kind of stuff um, but not only had it had a thousand views um, somehow I'd had the foresight to put the name of the website into the video my website into the video people were coming back to the website from the video so suddenly I went from three, four visits a day to 20, literally overnight, and suddenly I got 20 subscribers in two days, which was more than I'd had in six months. Six months. I thought, yeah, crazy. <laughs> so I thought, this is interesting. So I thought, I know, I'll make another one and see what happens. So I made another one, made another one, and, and the thing just took off. It just kept, tra traffic kept generating to the videos, traffic kept coming from the videos to the website. Um, and you know, in th in three years, I've gone from tw those twenty subscribers. Now the list is over twelve thousand. Um, and the the bass guitar isn't like the six string guitar. It's a very niche, small market. And I've been able to make it into a six figure business on the basic basis of the traffic that I get just from those videos. So it's a it's it's been really interesting. And what's also interesting is YouTube's becoming much more mainstream now, but in most market areas, and definitely for authors, as Sean mentioned, um, it's wide open. There are, in most market areas, you can find very few people doing video. Um, or and well. Well, at Even all. Even if they're doing it, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, and I think a lot of it is there's a lot of moving parts to video. You've got to get a reasonable camera you've got to get lighting you've got to get you've got to get great audio that's the most important part of video funnily enough is is the audio um, people who who come to me say what what advice have you got I say whatever your budget is split it in half spend half on the microphone and half on the camera and they think I'm joking and, and you've got these video <laughs> gurus I call them knobbins um, they, they advise you buy these like 30 40 quid cameras which have got which you just stick somewhere and talk and they've got built-in microphones the sound on those things is absolutely abysmal and you cannot afford you know like you talk uh, I've been watching a few of the podcasts this week catching up um, we apologize oh, for yeah, that. Now, now I've been loving it. I like the one with Joanna. That was really cool. Um, and, and I hope you've recorded all the after, after show stuff so you can send it out on the DVD. Members um, only. <laughs> anyway, um, th there's something that Sean says in, in one of them. I forget which one it was, but he says, you never send anything but your best work out. Even if you're self-publishing, you always make through, sure it's gone through the editing process, blah, 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 blah. Well, audio is the same thing as that with video. If your audio is crap and people can't hear it, um, you'll immediately piss off 50, 60% of your audience and they'll turn off within 10 seconds. Um, you have to have good quality audio. It, 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 it might sound counterintuitive when you're talking about video, but audio is one of the most important things you can have. Um, and it isn't, you know, it isn't particularly hard to do. I mean, I'm, I'm using a Rode Podcaster, $200 or $150, I don't know what they are now, but they're, they're not that expensive in the scheme of things. Um, you can get, um, I've got one as well, but I've never taken it out of the box. Um, uh, you can get the, the clip-on version, Rode Doer, um, Le, what do you call them in America? Lavalier? Lavalier. 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 Yeah, yeah they, you can get one of those $150 that, you know, and in the scheme of things that's not that expensive an investment to make because that's all you'll need is something like that and your audio quality will immediately be above most of your 
you know, most of your competitors. Because most people who they read stuff on the internet, the kind of stuff they read is will will say things like, Oh, you can get a thirty dollar USB headphone microphone from Amazon or wherever. And yeah, you can get a thirty dollar microphone from Amazon. Um but a hundred and fifty dollar microphone is gonna be more than five times better. Yeah, it's, but it's, those it's, are the same assholes who are saying, you know, you can get PLR and put it up on Kindle and make money. Like it, it, because they're they're selling the idea that it's it's accessible. Anyone can do this. And thirty dollars isn't out of reach. Maybe a hundred fifty dollars people tune out. So they're selling the wrong message basically. The, yeah, the, no, the no. mics that we use are it's called a Shure S H U R E S M fifty eight. All three of us have them, it's a hundred bucks. Yeah, no, I, I um what you I don't even know if Sean knows this, but um I run and manage uh, a couple of bands here in the UK and SM fifty eights are what we use on the road. Uh you know, the, I've got I've got an SM58 that I've had for 20 years, um, and it still works perfectly fine. They're 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 hefty microphones that are designed for the road. They're designed to be thrown around and and stuff like that. Uh, the only thing with the SM58, and I I don't know, perhaps you guys can tell me, the one that I've got, you wouldn't be able to connect up via a USB port, so you'd need a mixing desk or something like that. But maybe that's changed. I mean, I've not brought one for there. several years. Yeah, there's just as a side technical note on this, we had um, Dave and Sean both. So I'm plugged into a maker board, so I use the XLR, the native output for the mic. These guys put it in through USB, and um, it, I'm sorry, I'm resisting the urge to make a joke there. So <laughs> I did too. <laughs> so originally they had a cord that was it was it was you plugged one end into the back of the mic here, and the other end went. And there was a lot of noise on that. That was cheap. That was like 30 bucks. But the, what they have now is an adapter piece. I think it's about that long. And it's a USB. It's like a signal converter. And right, stop okay. it, John. Damn it. Stop <laughs> it. And that was like 100 bucks. So 200 bucks for audio for these guys. Yeah. I mean, it's it, it, in the scheme of things, it's it's not that massive an investment. I mean, I, I you know, I brought my camera. When I realized that video was starting to have results, um, I brought a, a, a decent camera. I spent 500 pounds on it which is about eight hundred dollars um, you could probably that was three years ago by the way so you could probably get the same camera for like two hundred dollars now um, so the, the equipment's not that expensive but you've still got the moving parts you've got to learn how to use if you're going to use um, if you're going to use live action stuff if you're going to actually film yourself you've got to learn how to light yourself things about backdrops where to position yourself you know the, the it, it isn't something that's intuitive. You cannot just stick a camera on a tripod, get someone to press record, start talking, and come out with a good video. You know, it, it, it's, it's a little more difficult than that, but it isn't that difficult. Um, and I, I just kept making videos, um, and I found a way of tying in making videos that I could put on YouTube to attract people to the website with making extended versions of those videos with extra content that went to people who'd subscribed to various things, you know, actually bought paying products. So I, I found a way of killing two birds with one stone, which was quite, which was quite good because it meant I didn't have to make extra videos. So, so Paul, how? Because I'm, I'm thinking of our situation. We're, we're basically we broadcast these, and th this all started because we used I'm to connect the T-shirt. By the way, I just read. The, no, thank read you. The, I read in, very, read the headline. Very few people who get the <laughs> I am the Quizat Tatarak T-shirt. Very good. Uh, but anyway, we used to do a, a group a Skype call, and the reason was because we wanted the verbal cues. So we were recording the audio. I'm sorry, the visual cues. So we were recording the audio, but with three guys, sometimes you trip over each other. So we wanted the ability to kind of go like this, raise your hand. And I don't remember who it was. It might have been Sean said, let's just do Google Hangouts and broadcast them to YouTube. But this is like a side product. Like the podcast is the main thing. And then this is a side product. They are videos on YouTube. We do put like the website URL in the description, but I don't know how well this jibes with what you're talking about for Legion. Since well, just Johnny, what if we thing. cut them up? What if we cut them up into funny segments or something? Where uh, uh, that's on you, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's just go back one step before we go forward. Um, so you're talking about using video as lead gen. Is this for potential readers for the various fiction stuff you've got or for self-publishing people? I don't know if you guys have got um, some, some 
an idea down the track to take some kind of self-publishing course and teach it or create an info no, product I, or something? I, I what what are the us, goals? We'd rather just write more fiction because... Agreed. Yeah, you know, I, I think... I don't think any of us want to do that. I, I think oh, we're all... We're Paul, all very have, willing to share, but yeah. we don't want to build a product. Yeah, Paul, yeah, no, just no, so no. you have the universe here, basically we have this podcast, which we recognize we're speaking to writers, which is, you know, that's the classic fallacy with people is to, you know, writers end up speaking to writers instead of the people who read. So we launched a second podcast called Better Off Undead that's about the horror sorts of things that we write about. And so we, for instance, there's a Google Hangout that's named the same thing as a podcast episode, it's named Fast of Zombies versus Slow Zombies. So I guess my question is, do you think that that sort of thing, we're just putting a, of a podcast recording about zombies, is effective lead gen for us as authors? Well, there's, there's two parts to lead gen, um, irrespective of how you're doing it. One is, in those podcasts, are you at any stage setting up something that you want people watching to do so that you actually know right well that's the we first fail thing. at that Th that's an epic fail um, <laughs> if, you d if you don't put a call to action in it's it's very hard for people to to actually take action and do something so you need to work out how you can put a call to action in so that's one part of the um, the lead gen side the other part is Getting the content, whatever it is, whether it's a podcast, video, transcript, whatever it is, is getting it in front of the potential target audience that you've got in mind, which is people who like you know, the kind of fiction that you're talking about. Um, that's kind of a, a content marketing thing. Um, and if it were me, um, I think Sean's along the right lines with chopping bits and, and getting five minute, ten minute sections that, that then you can perhaps title with the kind of long tail keyword phrases so that those clips then actually may turn up in a, you know, someone, like, let's say someone who's, a, who's into zombie, I haven't read much zombie fiction so I'm not an expert on it. But I've got a memory. The last Stephen King book I read was The Cell. And the kind of the bad is in that kind of zombies of a sort, aren't they? Yeah. Um, I'm assuming, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so let's, let's say you talk about the zombies in the cell at some stage. Um, there must be, because Stephen King, you know, the most popular author in the world, etc., there must be a ton of people searching for information on that, whether it's whatever, just typing it in. So if you talked about that at any stage for five minutes or ten minutes in an episode, that should be cut out, put as a separate, its own separate five-minute, ten-minute segment, whatever it is, given an appropriate title, and topped and tailed with like a graphic, just a simple, uh, you do it in Photoshop in like 20 seconds, that says, this is part of a bigger podcast, click link underneath the video, and you put a link underneath the video which sends them to the... Um, to the main podcast. So if they enjoyed that segment, then they go to that. Hopefully then you've got a call to action in that main bit. And so if they... The, the, the way that consumption of content works, if someone finds like a five or ten minute segment, listens to it, stroke watches it, goes, yeah, that was funny. I learned some stuff. I like what these guys are doing. Um, which if you go and put your copywriting hat on, that's the no like, trust part of the selling equation that you're establishing, but you're doing it a different way. You're, you're doing it with entertainment rather than with um, you know, trying to write educational content. Um, so if, if they do that, they find it, they go back to the big podcast or the where you've linked and said, here's where all the sections of this week go together. They watch one of those. If they enjoy it, um, Two seconds, Dave. If they enjoy it, then there's a chance they'll take the call to action, whatever that call to action, whether it's to get on your list for fiction or go and check out a sales page of one of your, your books on Amazon or something like that. So, so in essence, uh, making a shorter video, it's a lot better for searching because people are more like, if they're searching zombies, Stephen King or something, they're more likely to listen to a two to five minute video rather than an hour long video. So that really yeah. is a great 
great idea you just gave us. Yeah. The, the, yeah. the other the other part of that, if I can just cut in before Sean does. Yeah, no, no, um, please. Yeah, we fight that battle all the time. I know. Asshole. I've seen. I've seen. Um, <laughs> it is it, if I, I've not watched one of the uh, one of the undead. Podcast yet, um, but I watched four or five of the, the this one, the self-publishing ones, over the last week or so, just to uh, get an idea of what I'd let myself in for. And <laughs> and you what, still came on. Yeah, yeah, of course I did. <laughs> what what strikes me is that, and I'm sure your your other ones are exactly the same, is you cover a broad range of topics in each of those issues so even like the one with Joanna which Cover. is the one I, 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 yeah I watched I watched the, the Joanna one a couple of times because there was a, there was a specific part that I was really intrigued by and I wanted to um, hear what she was saying again but but taking the Joanna one as an example let's say you were trying to attract uh, people who wanted to self-publish there's about five or six five minute segments that you could take from the Joanna episode I think it was episode 18 um, and put those as like little teasers but then the benefit that you get from doing that is you can title that teaser with the appropriate keywords that might be then that five minute section might then be returned in the kind of search that someone looking for that information would make whereas with the going back to Stephen King using that as an example if you've got let's say you talk about loads of different zombies in different fiction you might talk about Stephen King you might talk about Johnny's fat zombie you might talk about <laughs> George Romero zombies uh, so you might cover let's say 20 authors um, you can't encompass that in one keyword rich title for the whole podcast um, so people let, let's say someone's looking for some kind of article on or some kind of something to do with Dawn of the Dead, Dawn of the Dead, the classic zombie movie. Um, they, sorry, not Dawn of the Dead, Night of the Living Dead. Um, if you've talked about that for five minutes, then that section should be its own standalone taster. In a way, it's almost like what you do with um, episode one of, of the serials. You know, you give them a taster. Someone who watches five minutes of that laughs out loud because you've told some good jokes and likes the, gets the humor, blah, blah, blah. There's a, there's a really good chance they're going to go on and look at some of the other things, maybe subscribe on iTunes or maybe come and watch the next one. And once that starts happening, you know, you're building up the whole making them a fan thing and it's much easier to get them to do something then. Um, th that, that would be the way I would do it with the podcast. So, so, Paul, is the major thing based on, it sounds like it's based around search rather than building YouTube community in and of itself. It's like you're trying to catch people who are looking for Night of the Living Dead or something. Um, the, way, the, way that, the way I'm different than most people you'll, you'll hear talking about YouTube is um, there's lots of differences. Um, but one of the main ones is they try and build their channel and their community thing on YouTube and they say you know they get the call to action in their videos is to subscribe to them on YouTube I don't want anyone subscribing to me on YouTube I don't give a fuck if no one does um, I've never once asked anyone to subscribe to me on YouTube it's an inbuilt reaction of people who know YouTube I've got 9,000 subscribers on YouTube I've never once asked for it um, so people will subscribe on YouTube if they like the content it's just a way an easy way of organizing the content that you want to see. So that's interesting, though. You have three thousand more people on a specific opted-in list than on YouTube. Yeah, there's lots of reasons so for that. So much more powerful. Yeah, but but getting them off YouTube and getting them to your email list, then you can do all sorts. You know, you can do the whole. You you know what the email marketing thing's about, so you can do that. But the way that the, the way that YouTube works for for people finding you is that they go to YouTube and they they most people will either go to look for a specific piece of information or they'll go to check out their subscriptions you know if there's sometimes um, I'm subscribed to a couple of um, video guys who who are um, they must be in with Google and YouTube because they they've always got the scoops on what's happening with YouTube and so I always whenever I go and check my stats or go and check comments on YouTube I always see if there's any new videos from them in my feed because they're usually interesting 
and information that's relevant to me because I teach people about video marketing. Um, so, let, but let's move it away from marketing. Let's say you're a horror fan and you found this this podcast. You're really enjoying it. When you go to next, go to YouTube. Um, I don't know how familiar you guys are with YouTube, but on your dashboard, you can see all the videos that your the people you're subscribed to have uploaded. So let's say you've got some guy in somewhere in America, he likes what you do, he goes to his channel, he goes, oh wow, these guys have got a new thing out, and he goes and clicks and watch, watches it. So that's one way people find you. But the, the more common way is people go to YouTube and they're looking for something. They're looking for some information or something to entertain them, um, and they'll type something into the YouTube search bar. That's the most common way that people find you. Um, so that's why splitting the the podcast down into manageable chunks and giving each of those chunks a long a specific long tail kind of phrase title gives you an increased chance of being found in a wide range of diverse searches the other thing that that does um, and again go back to an analogy thing Sean talked in one of the podcasts I, I watched about one of the reasons you went for the serial idea was it enabled you to get numbers of books up very quickly on Amazon so that you weren't just fucking mm. for, for three months mm -hmm. we've got one book you know so they've got six books suddenly in a, in a three month period or two month period of stuff well chopping the videos up does the same thing um, because YouTube uh, loves th there's a thing called the YouTube creators playbook which is you is a document that YouTube produce where they talk about the things that they want to see their content producers doing one of them they talk about is frequency and consistency um, and you get rewarded for it so uh, how, how often do you do the the um, the undead podcast is it weekly or fortnightly once a week once a week okay so you put that up so that's that's good anyway you're, you're already better than a lot of people who think doing video marketing means making two or three videos in a year and that's it but if you chop that up and let's let's say for each one you can get five things from it YouTube won't see those five things as related to your main thing so what it will see is each week you're putting six videos up you'll have different titles different keywords um, and it will reward you for that and it will start returning you in more searches so more people will find you hopefully more people will watch you you know some of them won't like you 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 know you you know that you you, you know this by now. most of you know the deal <laughs> <laughs> not everyone likes you and so you'll get some haters and some flamers uh, that doesn't matter because you can just delete them and block them and just tell them to fuck off so you, you don't need to worry about them but um by doing that, what, what you're doing is you're massively increasing your footprint on YouTube and you're massively increasing the chances that people who are interested in, in the information you're providing in those casts will find it, not through watching a complete thing, but by watching a five or six minute, you know, segment, you know, it's a Stephen King fan would be the typical one, oh, I see what these guys have got to say about the zombies in the cell. And maybe 80% of the people who find it won't do anything else who cares It's the 20 percent that do that are important and then you push them further down the line you get them to watch a bigger one and you get them to do something like subscribe or whatever it is and um, whatever the call to action you, you you guys are deciding the three of you need to jointly put in but it, it needs to be there because if you don't tell people what to do most people are like sheep they'll they won't do it so you know for, for some reason, I feel compelled right now to mention that you can go to howtobelegendary.com <laughs> and get my manifesto, How to Be Legendary. Um, it by is, the way, God is and always will be free. <laughs> Check out the pilot episode. <laughs> if you guys were impressed by 9,000 subscribers, we, I just looked up our stats, we have 44. <laughs> yeah, not that forty-four thousand. Like, forty-four. No, forty-four. Forty-four. Okay. So th there's a couple things here. First, for for us, we, we've um, we, I know how well stuff ranks on video if you juice it at all, right? So just keyword-rich stuff if you have it on a blog, just doesn't have the power that a, a, the same exact tag on YouTube does. And you get a thumbnail. It, yeah. So. This is an area that we can really maximize our press releases, guys. 
is by making keyword rich videos for stuff that we want to rank for and then just juicing in in the in the press release cuz we will we will rank for that stuff. Uh, like, the, uh, oh, I'm sorry Sean, guy. I'll go next. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. So so the 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 digital writer thing, I know Paul you're you're on that list. So you've seen me kind of figure this out. And really it's just been a time thing. I know exactly what I want to do. And Paul's actually talked to me about this for I don't is it, I don't want to say it's been two years because that's going to make me feel really shitty yeah. like I've done nothing with this, but I think it's been about that long, has it? It's about 18 months. Okay, that's just embarrassing. But I've you always haven't wanted... done anything in the meantime. You're just sitting around <laughs> eating chips. <laughs> well, he's, he's wrote loads of books. I've done nothing yeah, with that was my, I've, that always, was a... I've always really felt powerful uh, that the video has this, this power that we're just not tapping into. So, how an important point. Important yeah. point. Sorry, uh, that was a joking aside. He's wrote lots of books, but it, actually, before anyone thinks, if anyone's watching and thinking I could do this, the most important thing before you do anything like this is to make sure you've got something there on the other side. So when people get there, they go, "Yeah, this is good." You know, there's no point marketing anything if you've got a turd the other side. Yeah, no, that's you know, totally, you know. totally true. So, so, so the eighteen months was necessary. Because, yeah, definitely. You needed to yeah. put the, the stuff there and blah, blah, blah. And I remember the, the, the first time I talked about it and I was kind of breaking down the model, which, which is exactly what we're talking about now, getting videos and shooting them into little pieces. And I was actually talking about um, – and Dave's always bored when I'm talking about this particular thing. But, Johnny, you might like it, where basically it's a way to get a rough draft of a full book <laughs> where you know, you, you, you're, you're doing these videos – but because you come really close to your authentic speaking voice, if you get those videos transcribed, that's a that's clean rough draft. Content. Yeah, I noticed that YouTube transcribes; it does an on-the-fly transcription of these as well. So it's like it's, uh, I didn't know that. Yeah, really? it's 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 like a interactive. I mean, it's it's right under the videos. Go check them out sometime. It's kind of cool. They get it I wrong. Didn't know that. That's oh, cool. Not. It's close enough. It's actually really funny sometimes, some of the things you, you, you watch. <laughs> I, I had one guy come out in one of mine saying, everyone, you must put the transcript on and watch and listen. And I did it, and YouTube fucked it up totally, and it sounded hilarious. <laughs> I, I have a funny transcription story. So John, I think I've, I don't know if I've told this before. John Morrow, um, friend of mine, marketer, writer, um, he uses voice transcription for everything, and he said that he accidentally w tweeted once he tweeted nuke Iraq <laughs> <laughs> because it was a it is his voice software got it wrong <laughs> nuke Iraq that was it that was the whole tweet so here's the question I was gonna ask earlier and by the way I feel the need to point out that I think it's really like you guys see what Sean does here but there's like a bunch of stuff you don't even see that he's doing, and I think it's really funny that you are genuinely like feeling bad that you haven't been doing video marketing. <laughs> so, but here was my question, Paul: was um, authors who do a podcast, we got videos anyway. <clears throat> but what about the average person watching this who currently they're writing? Like, do they do they just start making videos about things that are in their? I mean, how would people get started with this for the That's average person? Question. For me, uh, and this. Um, Sean knows this. I don't know how much he shared, but I'm. Um, I've written, as I said earlier, I've written on and off since I was 12, um, and done some novels, screenplays, some stuff like that, and been really inspired by watching what he's been doing over the last year. Um, and I'm just starting out, and I'm planning to get my first Kindle story. It'll be a like a novella, like you were talking about with the zombie things. Although it won't be zombies. Um, I'm hoping to get my first one up by Christmas. Um, so obviously one of the things you need to do is, is build an audience. So one of the ways, um, once I've got three or four, one of the ways I've thought of doing it, um, and, and this, is, this is totally wide open. There's, there's no, I've looked around, I looked around earlier today. Um, my kids came home from school, um, and I put them on the... Nintendo said, I've got to do a bit of research, guys. <laughs> Play Nintendo for an hour. And they were like, fucking A, this is great. We don't know, they don't normally get it on a school night, but I needed them to be occupied. Anyway, so off they went and did that. And I looked on Amazon and I looked in different genres, ranging from romance to thrillers to horror to science fiction. Couldn't find one example of this. And what it is, it's a video review. 
no one is doing it Amazon will let you upload a video review if you upload a video review guess where it comes in the reviews comes at the fucking top oh wow they put it at the top so for sure Dave there yesterday's gone Apocal I can't even say the word it's too late apocalyptic fiction the two books that stand out to me in that genre not that it's a genre I know a massive amount about is the stand by Stephen King and a book called Swan Song by Robert McCammon. Swan Song was a big inspiration. Yeah, it's a great book. Um, I went and checked both of those books out. The Stand has got 1,200 reviews on it, and Swan Song's got nearly 700. If you guys went and put a short video review at the front of that, you guys would be at the top. And what you have to be careful about on Amazon is they really don't want you to you, you can't put a review up that's pr self promotional because you'll get it taken down but and 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 the caveat is i've not tested this so i don't know so it, it needs to be tested but it's something i plan to do um if you introduce introduce yourself you could say hey i'm dave Wright, writer of yesterday's gone i'm here to review swan song one of my all time favorite books inspired me to be a writer that's all you need to do you've given people what your name is and what you've written it's enough if someone enjoys the review they might go hey this guy says he became a writer and he's written this book I might go check that out now for all I know you might get nothing from it absolutely zero but it wouldn't take long to create a short reasonable quality two to three minute video it wouldn't need to be anything more than that talking about the book that they're interested in what you might find is you get drive-through traffic from that. I don't know for sure. So that's one thing you could do. Um, you know, there must be the, 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 the thing with most writers, I'm sure you guys are the same, most writers are voracious readers. So we all read a shitload of books. So if you found it worked, you could probably think of 20 books that you could immediately go out and do one a day, do a two, three minute review, get them up. And, and remember, those reviews come at the top of the Amazon review chart. So it's the first thing anyone sees if they scroll down to the reviews. It's wide open. No one is doing it. I guarantee you. You gave me a version of this idea over a year ago when all we had up was Available Darkness. And you're like, yeah, you got to go to their, shoot a video, go to the Facebook page. <laughs> and I told it to Dave and he's like, that's a great idea. And we've done wait, so wait, wait, much with wait. it. Dave said that was a great idea? Yes, I did. And yeah, you like this one. Because I'm imagining Dave's head blowing up. <laughs> that, that, that's... We, we did, but it's one of those things that, you know, we didn't make time to do. And it's well, a well, matter that's of... Just, yeah, that's just the first part of the, 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 the thing that I would do. So that's the first thing you do. Then you'd make another copy of the video. You have to... I, I think with Amazon, you'd have to have different content because... One of the terms of service with Amazon, when you upload a review um, or anything like that... It has that, to be unique. It has to be unique, and they own the copyright for it. And if they find stuff elsewhere, they'll take, they, they will take your stuff down, which would be a disaster if it was working. They, they also want to... Well, I looked into this, actually, when Sean mentioned it, and they won't allow you to watermark it or put a URL or anything like no, that. No, you can't, you can't do anything like that. So, and probably that poster behind me would probably have to go. <laughs> probably. Uh, you'd have to watch Put up out, Team but... Edward again. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, so that would be the first thing you do. You make a short one for Amazon. Then you make a longer one, which goes on your blog. It goes on YouTube. And you find places, like there must be, let, let's take the stand. There must be fucking Facebook pages about yeah. the stand or about Stephen King. You find as many pages as you can like that, where people are, who would be interested in the thing... And you go and stick it on that. And this time, this review has got contact details or details so they can get to either your author page or to your book listing on Amazon. Um, so that's the next thing that I do. The next thing I do is if I was building a list, which obviously we all should be doing, if someone's something like this could be a great way to help build a list as well. Because although there are some people who are like... Um, will read cross genre and read in different genres most people tend to read in quite narrow genres um, so if you're putting up something that's similar to your book there's a fair chance that you'll attract people who like that kind of stuff want to hear about other books like that because um, 
you know, the, the people you really want to attract aren't the people who buy the odd book here and there. You want to attract the guys who buy four books a week or Junkies, five books yeah. a week. Yeah. yeah. And, and those guys are always looking for um, recommendations. You know, it's the whole word of mouth thing. And so if, l let's take an example. Let's say we've got some 19-year-old kid in America who reads kind of dark horror, fantasy, that kind of stuff. Um, he sees your review. Let's say he sees it on Facebook somewhere because he's a fan of The Stand. And he likes the review. And he thinks, oh, I'll check these guys out. He goes back and sees you've done other reviews. One of them is a book that he's not heard of and not read. And he goes, oh, I'll go buy this. He enjoys it. Confirms the fact that he's got similar taste to you guys. There's a fair chance that at some stage soon, especially if he's signed up for your list, he'll buy one of your books and try one of your books as well. Um, and that's what you want is you, you want to get these guys who buy lots of books to know about you and it doesn't matter how they find out about you what's important is they find out about you and then they go they get on your list and then you can tell them oh we've got this new you know like Dave does with the newsletter um, we've got the new um, zombie book coming out next week or whenever it's coming out so that the people in the audience know something's coming so you can build some buzz build some anticipation so you can get sales on the first day that kind of stuff that all helps with the rankings and the listings it all feeds into the the goals that you've got um, and every time you put up a new review you just send an e you, you embed it on your blog or your website as well and you send an email to your existing list and say hey we did another review today you might want to check it out because if they watch that review what they're doing is they're engaging with you again we're talking about building the no like trust if you're giving them a review, it's giving them solid information, entertaining them, giving them a good recommendation, whatever. That all makes the process of saying, hey, we've got this new story out there. Here's the link. It makes the clicking of that link that much more frictionless. Um, so that would be how I would do it if I was doing it rather than a podcast. Who wants to do the Burdamic review? Oh, my <laughs> God. God. You, can, you, can you, you can do video reviews on Goodreads, can't you? I had a look today. I'm, I've, Goodreads isn't something I've spent much time on. I couldn't see where you could do it because I was looking for it precisely to say you could do it on Goodreads as well. But That's I couldn't see where you could do it. So uh, it's possible that you can, um, but I had a 10-minute scout around and I couldn't find and it. Community, oh, I'm sorry. The community there is a lot harsher on self-promotion. They would well, just ream you if you did it the wrong way. <laughs> yeah, and this is where I, this is, at this point I want to I want to ask Dave because I was I was joking before kind of but I mean Dave we talked in episode 20 I think about um, the ethical line with reviews and so forth. So does any of this rub you the wrong way in terms of if you're you're reviewing a book and you're kind of promoting your own thing kind of or what do you think? I, I'm 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 a little I'm a little hesitant to uh I don't think I'd follow Paul's advice on putting it on other people's websites just because it would to me, it's a little too self-promotional. I I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't say not to do it. I just don't know if I would because I'm I'm really you know hypersensitive about those things. No, I don't want to. I don't want to be seen as. I don't want to be never seen that about as being you. too self. For fuck all y'all. <laughs> I, I don't want to self-promote myself uh, to such an extent that it turns people off. Uh, Amazon, I would do it if I was you know, I'd have to have something really you know unique and good to say about the book and I, I'd want to make it a good content so I'm not self-promoting. I, I would feel kind of sleazy self-promoting too much. You can't self-promote on Amazon. You, you, right. that, that's why you'd have to make a different version. You, the, the terms of service there are very strict. If you, go, if you go look on their guidelines for uploading video reviews, there's about 10 lines of stuff that you can't do. So, right. um, yeah, but so that's what's awesome it. about it is that it's not self-promotional. Like you really are just going, it's, it's, it's a Trojan horse. I mean, hopefully someone, but, but there's no call to action. There's nothing you're saying. Yeah, I'd be that. interested like in it. seeing if it actually worked because it reminds yeah. me of the advice with blogs to comment on other people's blogs to drive traffic to yours, which does not, in my experience, work. But I'd be interested in seeing if this worked. Yeah, I, I, as I said, I prefaced it with a caveat that it, yeah. I've not tried it. I don't know if it would work, but I don't see why not. Um, at the the other thing that would be interesting about it, um, especially in the light of the last couple of weeks, is you've got all this hoo ha going on about sock puppets and all the fake reviews and stuff. Well, this you know 
how real can these reviews be? Because people can, you know, if, if say mm. Sean does one, um, if people go to Sean's website, they they can see it's Sean. There's no way, or go to his author page even on Amazon would be better for him. They can see it's the same guy. There's, there's no question that it can be any of this sock puppet bullshit, and it's a genuine review. Um, and also, the other thing I think it should be a genuine review. Um, I don't think you should give five stars unless the book is absolutely, you know, knocking your socks off. Um, if the book's less than a three star book, I don't think you should take the time to review it because review it. It, then you then you're getting into negatives, and you don't want to be associated with negatives. Um, but if it's a three or a four star book, I, I think it's worth a try. Um, you know, yeah. uh, as I say, sorry, go ahead, Dave. Well, I, I was just going to say Amazon does have policies against uh, knocking on your competitors. Uh, if if you if you if you post a video that you know slams a book that's opposite yours, you know, that that could be deemed as you know going after financial interests. Yeah, I, I, I just, I, I mean, I wouldn't personally, I, I mean, there are probably some people who out there who they came across this idea might think, yeah, I'm going to leave shitty reviews on these guys' videos. <laughs> um, personally, even if it was something I hated and wouldn't recommend to someone I absolutely detested even, <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't waste my time and effort and energy right. leaving a one-star or two-star review. It's, it's just... It, a, I don't want to, to go into the negativity side of it because, you know, a lot of writers are um, struggle to disassociate feedback of their work from criticism of them as a person. Um, it's a common. I mean, hey, listen, I've had the same thing. Um, yeah, I think we all have. <laughs> yeah, of course we have. So, so you wouldn't want to go there because you'd you'd. You'd get knocked back because you know if I saw that on a book I'd written and someone had written this, this guy's a total wanker and his book's crap. <laughs> I'd be over to his website to try and pull it down or hack into it or something. <laughs> I'd be after him. So you don't want to stir that stuff up anyway because you never know. It's you know, just not worth it. It doesn't serve your interest at that's all. Exactly and people right. who think it does are just missing the point and wasting your time. It, it doesn't promote your goals, so I, no. I, I wouldn't wouldn't do it anyway. But anyway. So, also yeah, violates so, our policy of don't be a dick. <laughs> um, I want to I want to circle back real quick to, um, and then this should probably be the we should we should probably wrap it up too. We're at an hour, guys. Okay. So so when we were talking last year, and I was I was saying, do you think this is a good idea? And, and you liked a lot of it, but your pushback with me was, um, you can't do a talking head video because that's not engaging enough for people. That's not enough. And I think that's important cover for authors because so many of us are like lone wolves. We're just you know, or grizzly bears like Dave. You know, we're just in our caves and doing our thing. And what makes this work, and what what why I'm trying to do, I'm revisiting the idea, is because there's three of us, or at least two of us. Like we're talking, there's banter, so there's always back and forth, and something for the viewer to engage with. And when I'm revisiting this idea for the hangouts, I knew immediately I needed someone opposite me. So I'm like, Dave, you know, if if I outline this and I'm gonna give you 12 questions, can you do that? Because then I'm still promoting my goals, being able to talk about what I want to, but there's something else other than me just bleh to the viewer for an hour. Yeah, no, no, that that's that's really important, especially if any of your, you know, a good portion of your target demographic is male, um, because we're ev evolutionary programmed to look for movement. Um, yeah. it, it's I, I won't get bore you with this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but. But that kind of thing, you, you laugh, but if there's someone just talking on his own, it gets very boring very quickly. If you watch, watch the news, that will, that will clue you in. If you watch how the news works, they'll have two or three anchors. Even if one anchor's speaking for more than about five seconds, you'll see him turn his head and, the cam and they change to a different camera. Um, th the news gives you, a, you know, an idea of... That, that's what, they do it for a reason. They don't do it because they want to have extra cameras. They do it as cheaply as they could. They, they do it because it works. So you've got to keep the visual interest. Um, there are other ways of doing it. You can, um, if it was just a talking head, then you you position yourself on the side of the camera, and then you could get words flying up. You could you could edit it edit it in so words come up so that you've got something visual moving or you could have um, like a graphic of the book that comes in and maybe a screenshot of 
chapter 22 or something like that or, or just words coming in depending on what you're saying in if you're doing a more review style thing but for the hangout thing I think it's it's I think you're right I think I mean I I'm terrible at watching talking head videos I loathe them um, and I will only watch them usually if I'm really if I can't get the information any other way yeah. but I, as I say I watched three or four episodes of the podcast um, over the last few days to see what to expect and how you did things and stuff and having the people and having the, the other thing is I don't know how it's done whether Google does it whether Johnny does it but the, the, the way the screen is for me I'm sure it's the same for you is I've got a, a big shot of you and yeah Google I've does got, it yeah right okay well that see now I've just gone the big shot's gone to, to Johnny now and that keeps the uh, yeah, it, that's it, beautiful. I love that it's so automatic too. It's just it it's keeps really you engaged. I don't like watching videos either, but when I've gone to check these and I'm like, oh, well, I want to keep watching this because oh, there's Sean yeah. and oh, there's Dave. It, it's yeah, called it's, it's, it's called resetting the viewer's attention. Another thing that you could do to really um, emphasize it, it's really noticeable when it changes to Johnny because of the color of the wall behind him. Um, whereas you and Dave have got similar walls and you've got pictures, Dave's got the curtain half drawn. But what I, I don't know if it's possible. <laughs> That's if, a metaphor for his life. <laughs> no, but but if Dave, for example, could draw the curtain all the way across, then when it changes to Dave, it's I know too it's small. Okay, okay. <laughs> but but just a simple backdrop or something, a coloured backdrop behind one of you, then makes each of you different. So when that thing changes, um, it it immediately when, when it changes to Johnny the the color s leaps out from the screen and it really catches the eye so it really resets that vo the visual attention span I like yeah, that. I have, a, I have a red wall behind me which is if you're if you're listening on the audio feed so well that's I'm that's gonna really, paint my wall black yeah, yeah. Dave has yeah, a that curtain of black <laughs> <laughs> I've wanted to forever. My wife seems to have a problem with that, though. But, but if you do, don't wear a black T-shirt. <laughs> It'll slip me. Yeah, because you'll, you'll go invisible. It'll just be a head. It could be quite interesting, actually, if you put some luminous face paint on. It'll just be the luminous head. Save that for better off. I head. like that. <laughs> so now we're going to have to... Uh, I, th I think this is a really interesting thing to explore, and, and the, the, the task will be implementing it to the right degree and not letting Sean go off and be like, ooh, let's do this and do nothing else. Well, no, you know what the <laughs> thing is? We could test it at the digital writer because it's. It, I'm only doing it to do this. Like I expect to get six videos mm -hmm. per hangout, and they'll be optimized. And they're like, because we 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 ramble a little bit more, and you know, <laughs> no. or I ramble. But but the whole show is that it's it's hard to do that with keywords. But with the digital writer, I'm going into it with keywords ahead of time, so we could try it. We could split them. We could do press releases around them and see what results we get, and bring that back to the podcast without changing anything we're doing here for now. That's Does this cool. mean I have to split the videos? No, Tanya will do it. Oh, okay. All right. Awesome. I love the idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, uh, we've we got to mention Paul's website. Where can we find Paul? Yes, that's what I was going to do. Where, where's the best place for you, Paul? Cool. I don't know. It depends what you want to find. Keep um, them all. <laughs> <laughs> the secret one. <laughs> no, I'm just too early for the secret one. Um, probably the best <laughs> one for people the kind of audience you're likely to have uh, for this podcast is www.onespoonatatime.com and it's O-N-E-S-P-O-O-N at a time dot com no spaces um, that's where I talk about um, kind of marketing, blogging, mostly about video this year. I've not talked about much else other than video different things you can do with videos. There's a shitload of advice up there. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. And, and what's right, the so base one? Uh, the base one is howtoplaybase.com, um, but there are hyphens between each of the words. So how hyphen to to hyphen play hyphen base b a s s dot com. Thank you. All right, outstanding. Well, thank you so much, uh, Paul. I think this has given us a lot to think about. I'm glad that we're doing the video that we're doing. And the question is, how can we do it better? So, because I we are drawing some traffic, but it's not. I'd like it to be more, but I, I'm glad we're doing it. So. So great. So cool. thank you for being on. Thank you very much. A pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Good, good always, you. I always love talking to you. That's cool. If you've got any questions, just send them. Send an email to Sean, and he can email me. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. 
Or via the podcast contact website would be how to contact Sean, too. All right, so uh, this has been a uh, self-publishing podcast. Let's go ahead and do a call to action, gentlemen. Uh, mine yeah! Was, mine was howtobelegendary.com. We already gave Paul's. What? Uh, where do you guys want to send people? Uh, Available Darkness just came out. We're we're re serial or we're serializing um, our first our first novel, Available Darkness. Episode one came out today. It's ninety nine cents, and it's awesome. Collectiveinkwell.com. All right, and um, if you have any questions, comments, whatever for us, just go ahead and leave them on. Attention. Leave them. Leave them on the uh, the, 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 the website, selfpublishingpodcast.com. <laughs> and uh, Paul Jammer with the bass. And. Um, uh, I don't know. I'm completely dis- 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 Sean messed me up with his visual uh, whatever. Um, <laughs> Diarrhea. <laughs> I'm going to have Fat Vampire coming out, but you can't do anything with that yet. That's going to be fun. And do come show up next week for uh, Hugh Holly. That'll be really cool, too, the author of Wolf. So everybody take care. We'll see you next time.